Now that we have an instance of the image class, we can examine the file contents and physically display the image itself. If we want to find the dimensions of the image, we can use the size attribute, which returns a tuple of width and height, or we can call out the width and height attributes individually. These dimensions will be important when we start editing the image, as we'll iterate through the rows and columns of pixels. We can get the format of the image, in this case, PNG, and we can also get info, which will return a dictionary of other image data that exists. The mode defines the type and depth of a pixel in the image. Pillow supports a number of modes, but you can't define your own. Common modes include L, which is grayscale, RGB, and in some of our examples, we'll be using RGBA to use the fourth color channel of alpha, allowing us to manipulate transparency in a PNG image. Now that we've extracted information about the image, let's display the image itself. As I mentioned in the previous video, it's not the default behavior of Pillow to physically display an image every time you're interacting with the image class programmatically. Let's say you wrote a script to batch process a large directory of images. Every time your script iterates through an image, it would display it on the screen. Doing this over and over again would cause the processing to lag. My general rule of thumb is to display images to help you debug your code. As you're writing your script, it can be helpful to see how the image displays. Once you're confident that your code runs smoothly, you can remove the line of code that prompts the image to display. Let's give it a try. For most of you, all you'll need to do is use the show method on your image object without any parameters. You may be prompted the first time you run your code to select an application to open the image with. What program it opens will depend on your operating system. If you have any difficulties opening an image, feel free to reach out in the Q&A. Once you run your code, the image should display. Easy enough. Now you may find it useful to display your image at multiple points during the code execution. You could display the image initially, manipulate your image, and display the changes to the image. Just remember that the show method saves the image temporarily to the disk and then opens it with your external viewer. So use this method sparingly, except when debugging.